All right. Howdy, everybody. And welcome to the Word 71. Now, this one is special. It, I find it ironic or very interesting, the timing of where our reading left off uh, this past Sabbath with First Chronicles 22 being the last chapter we read. Now, the next two chapters in Chronicles deal with David laying out the courses of work for the Levites to provide support for the priests in the temple, and then the courses for the priests to do their work in the temple. So we're going to listen to Otto Reader for those two chapters, and then we're going to read a little bit in the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. So let's get to it right now. And then after we get into the scripture, we're going to go to a different study and take a look at that. All right. So I got this here. I'll share this. And here we go. First Chronicles 23. So when David was old and full of days, he made Solomon his son king over Israel. And he gathered together all the princes of Israel with the priests and the Levites. Now the Levites were numbered from the age of 30 years and upward, and their number by their poles, man by man, was 30 and 8,000, of which 20 and 4,000 were to set forward the work of the house of the Lord, and 6,000 were officers and judges. Moreover, 4,000 were porters, and 4,000 praised the Lord with the instruments which I made, said David, to praise therewith. And David divided them into courses among the sons of Levi, namely Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Of the Gershonites were Ladan and Shimei. The sons of Ladan, the chief was Jehiel, and Zetham, and Joel, three. The sons of Shimei, Shelemith, and Haziel, and Haran, three. These were the chief of the fathers of Ladan. And the sons of Shimei were Jahath, Zinnah, and Jeush, and Beriah. These four were the sons of Shimei. And Jahath was the chief, and Zizah the second. But Jeush and Beriah had not many sons. Therefore they were in one reckoning, according to their father's house. The sons of Kohath, Amran, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel, four. The sons of Amran, Aaron, and Moses, and Aaron was separated, that he should sanctify the most holy things, he and his sons forever, to burn incense before the Lord, to minister unto him, and to bless in his name forever. Now concerning Moses, the man of God, his sons were named of the tribe of Levi. The sons of Moses were Gershom and Eliezer. Of the sons of Gershom, Shebuel was the chief. And the sons of Eliezer were Rehabiah the chief, and Eliezer had none other sons, but the sons of Rehabiah were very many. Of the sons of Izhar, Shelemeth the chief. Of the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, and Jechameam the fourth. Of the sons of Uziel, Micah the first, and Josiah the second. The sons of Merai, Malai, and Mushai. The sons of Malai, Eleazar, and Kish. And Eleazar died and had no sons but daughters, and their brethren, the sons of Kish, took them. The sons of Mushai, Malai, and Eder, and Jeremoth, three. These were the sons of Levi after the house of their fathers, even the chief of the fathers, as they were counted by number of names by their poles, that did the work for the service of the house of the Lord from the age of twenty years and upward. For David said, The Lord God of Israel hath given rest unto his people, that they may dwell in Jerusalem forever, and also unto the Levites. They shall no more carry the tabernacle, nor any vessels of it for the service thereof. For by the last words of David, the Levites were numbered from twenty years old and above, because their office was to wait on the sons of Aaron for the service of the house of the Lord in the courts and in the chambers and in the purifying of all holy things, and the work of the service of the house of God, both for the showbread and for the fine flour for meat offering, 
and for the unleavened cakes, and for that which is baked in the pan, and for that which is fried, and for all manner of measure and size, and to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord, and likewise at even, and to offer all burnt sacrifices unto the Lord in the Sabbaths, in the new moons, and on the set feasts, by number, according to the order commanded unto them, continually before the Lord, and that they should keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the charge of the holy place, and the charge of the sons of Aaron their brethren, in the service of the house of the Lord. First Chronicles 24. Now these are the divisions of the sons of Aaron. The sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no children. Therefore Eleazar and Ithamar executed the priest's office. And David distributed them, both Zadok of the sons of Eleazar and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar, according to their offices in their service. And there were more chief men found of the sons of Eleazar than of the sons of Ithamar, and thus were they divided. Among the sons of Eleazar there were sixteen chief men of the house of their fathers, and eight among the sons of Ithamar according to the house of their fathers. Thus were they divided by lot, one sort with another, for the governors of the sanctuary and governors of the house of God were of the sons of Eleazar and of the sons of Ithamar. And Shemaiah, the son of Nathaniel, the scribe, one of the Levites, wrote them before the king and the princes and Zadok the priest and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar, before the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites, one principal household being taken for Eleazar and one taken for Ithamar. Now the first lot came forth to Jehoiarib, the second to Jedaiah, the third to Harim, the fourth to Seorim, the fifth to Malchijah, the sixth to Mijamin, the seventh to Hakoz, the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shechaniah, the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jakim, the thirteenth to Hupa, the fourteenth to Jeshebiab, the fifteenth to Bilga, the sixteenth to Emer, the seventeenth to Hazir, the eighteenth to Afses, the nineteenth to Pethahiah, the twentieth to Jehezekel, the one and twentieth to Jachin, the two and twentieth to Gamal, the three and twentieth to Delaiah, the four and twentieth to Maaziah. These were the orderings of them in their service to come into the house of the Lord, according to their manner, under Aaron their father, as the Lord God of Israel had commanded him. And the rest of the sons of Levi were these, of the sons of Amram, Shubael, of the sons of Shubael, Jediah, concerning Rehabiah, of the sons of Rehabiah, the first was Ishiah, of the Israelites, Shalometh, of the sons of Shalometh, Jahath, and the sons of Hebron, Jeriah the first, Amariah the second, Jehaziel the third, Jechamim the fourth, of the sons of Uziel, Micha, of the sons of Micha, Shamir, the brother of Micha was Ishiah, of the sons of Ishiah, Zechariah. The sons of Merari were Malai and Mushai. The sons of Jaziah, Benel. The sons of Merari, by Jaziah, Benel, and Shoham, and Zakur, and Ibrai. Of Malai came Eleazar, who had no sons. Concerning Kish, the son of Kish was Jeremiel. The sons also of Mushai, Malai, and Eder, and Jeremoth. These were the sons of the Levites after the house of their fathers. These likewise cast lots over against their brethren, the sons of Aaron, in the presence of David the king, and Zadok, and Ahimelech, and the chief of the fathers of the priests and Levites, even the principal fathers, over against their younger brethren. All right. Now we are going to skip forward quite a bit. <clears throat> And look at the first chapter of Luke, because we are going to see some interesting correlations here. Let's come up to the top of our menu, scroll down in the order in which it is in Scripture, and hop over. So Luke chapter 1.
Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they deliver them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and have said to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained as speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me, to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, 
the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days, and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath shown great strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats, and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed for ever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbors and her cousins heard how the Lord had shown great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marveled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them. And all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, what manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, Thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us 
to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Then the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts to the day of his showing unto Israel. Bam! Yeah, that's right. Bam. Okay, you guys are like, what's going on, Crazy John? What's up, Crazy Jonathan? Well, here's the deal. We were just told exactly when Jesus the Christ, Yeshua Messiah, was born. Go ahead. You can pick your nose. But we're going to take a look at this. Now, why bring this up now? Because this is the time of year. This is that time of year that our Savior was born with the sheep in the field, sheep and shepherds in the field. When you look at this, now is the time to share this with your family that you're trying to get to leave the pagan holidays behind. Now is the time to discuss it with them, saying, look, why are we celebrating that? It's, why are we bringing in pine trees and covering them with silver and gold like the prophets said was pagan worship? Now is the time. Not when they have a big bunch of commercial junk wrapped up underneath a tree that they bow down to to stick it underneath and bow down to to pull it back out. No. So let's check this out, shall we? Now this is from an appendix in the Companion Bible by Bullinger. Now, the dates might not be exact. They might not be exact. That doesn't matter. Okay? Don't sit there and argue about September 28th or September 11th or anything like that. Okay? This is Tammuz worship with the name Jesus plastered on it and taped up over it but keeping all those same pagan traditions and worship. Or now, this time of year, when we celebrate the mercy and grace that's given to us, the salvation that's given to us by fellowship with our fellow brethren. So let's take a look at this. Okay, this is part three of the parallel datings of the times of our Lord. Okay, the beginning of the nativity, etc. The course of Abaya, right? Or Abijah, as it was in First Chronicles. Now, this was the eighth of the priestly courses of ministration in the temple, right? First Chronicles 24, verse 10 and occurred, as did the others, twice in the year. The courses were changed every week, beginning each with a Sabbath. The reckoning commenced on the 22nd day of what we call Tisri, or Ethanim. You can get that from the Companion Bible, Appendix 51, Part 5. This was the eighth and last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. That sounds familiar. The great day of the feast, that's mentioned in John 7.37, and was a Sabbath, Leviticus 23, verse 39. The first course fell by lot to Jehoiarib, and the eighth to Abiah or Abijah, in 1 Chronicles 24.10. Bearing in mind that all 
courses served together at the three great feasts, the dates for the two yearly ministrations of Abiah will be seen to fall as follows. The first ministration was from the 12th to the 18th of Chisleu, that is translated roughly, depending on the year, to the current calendar we use as December 6th through the 12th. The second ministration was from the 12th to the 18th of Siban, or June 13th through the 19th. Time-wise, those are inverted. Now the announcement, therefore, to Zacharias in the temple as to the conception of John the Baptist took place between the 12th and 18th of Sivan, or June 13th through 19th in the year 5 BC. After finishing his ministration, the aged priest, quote, departed to his own house. That's what we just heard in Luke chapter 1, verse 23, which was in a city in the hill country of Judah. That's in verse 39 of Luke chapter 1. The following day, the day following the end of the course of Abiah being a Sabbath, which was Sivan 19th, he would not be able to leave Jerusalem before the 20th. Up here, next column. The 30 miles journey would probably occupy for an old man a couple of days at least. He would therefore arrive at his house on the 21st or 22nd. This leaves ample time for the miraculous conception of Elizabeth to take place on or about the 23rd of Sivan, which would correspond to June 23rd or 24th of that year. Remember, he's going off of 5 BC. It really doesn't matter, okay? Pay attention. The fact of the conception and its date would necessarily be known at the time and afterward, and hence the 23rd Sivan would henceforth be associated with the conception of John the Baptist as the first Tibet, would be that would be with that of our Lord. But the same influences that speedily obscured and presently obliterated the real dates of our Lord's begetting and birth were also at work with regard to those of the forerunner, meaning John the Baptist, and with the same results. As soon as the true birth day of Christ had been shifted from its proper date, namely the 15th of Tishri or September 29th, and a festival day from the pagan calendar substituted for it, namely December 25th, then everything else had to be altered too. Hence, Lady Day, in association with March 25th, the new style, became necessarily connected with the Annunciation, and June 24th made its appearance, as it still is in our calendar, as the date of the Nativity of John the Baptist, instead of, as it really is, the date of his miraculous conception. The four quarter days may, therefore, be set forth thus, First, in the chronological order of the events with which they are associated, namely, the conception of John the Baptist on or about the 23rd of Sivan or June 24th in the year 5 BC. The Genesis, beginning of our Lord, on or about 1st Tibet or 27th, 25th of December in the year 5 BC. The birth of John the Baptist on or about the 4th to the 7th of Nisan, which is March 25th to 28th of the year 4 BC, and the birth of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, on or about 15th Tishri, September 29th in the year 4 BC. Or, placing the two sets together naturally, conception of John, 23rd Sivan, or June 23rd to 24th, in the year 5 BC, the birth of John, 7th of Nisan, March 28th to 29th in the year 4 BC, the miraculous, miraculous beginning, 1st Tibet, December 25th, the year 5 BC, and then the Nativity, 15th Tishri, September 29th in the year 4 BC. Now this is from, it's posted on a website called The Rain 
www.ghostbusinessfoundation.org. Now, that being said, you will hear others argue that, no, he was born in March. Well, I live on the same parallel, the same latitude that Jerusalem is on, right? Same type of, same type of landscape, desert landscape, cold winters, hot summers. And I'm telling you right now, in March, people are not putting sheep in the field. There's no grass out there. There's nothing for sheep to be eaten on. It still gets pretty cold at night in March. So they can argue that if they want. But in my not-so-humble opinion, they're wrong. So listen, share this, okay? Share this with the people that you're trying to break out of the tradition of blindly following the worship patterns that our society follows. It's well worth it. It took years and years and years, but our family is finally, our household is finally doing the feasts as prescribed in scripture. And it's such a blessing. It's such a huge blessing that I hope you join us. You know, my personal opinion, however the calendar was shifted that year, I believe that Messiah was born on what we call the Day of Atonement. That's my belief. I believe the wedding feast will be the great feast. In other words, Sukkot. This year? I don't know. Nobody knows. But does that mean it won't be another day? No, I just have a feeling. Anyways, I love you all. Leave your questions and comments below the article. Please share this with people you want to have this knowledge and with your loved ones. Because you want to love them. You want them to break out of it too. Okay, I'll talk to you soon. Love you all.